Have you ever wondered what a long-range precision air gun would do to a squirrel at 30 yards? If so, boy oh boy, are you in luck, because in today's video, the tree rats, man, they just kept getting in the way of my shots as I was setting up my new long-range slug shooter, the Epic II. I'll give you a quick overview of this new rig here in a few minutes, but if you're here for just some good old-fashioned tree rat dirt naps, have no fear. Today's video has tons of buttery smooth, oof, tracers just like that. Lastly, I'm shooting only slugs in this video, which retain a lot more energy downrange, which I'll showcase in two educational ways. First, for you visual learners, I capture these violent energy dumps through scope cam and three additional GoPro cameras filming downrange in 240 frames per second. And then for the nerds sitting in the front row, I got you covered with the FX True Ballistic Chronograph, which equate these violent energy dumps you're seeing into two important numbers. Feet per second, the slug is traveling, and then the corresponding foot-pounds of energy, which in this case was 63.7 foot-pounds. I'm running the 50 grain Altros ATP smooth slugs again on this shot. Watch the energy dump on this thing. Oh man, looks like I hit that thing with a hammer. Yeah, that hit the off switch. Look at that perfect little entry wound there. That's wild. Now, while we wait for this frozen rope to hit the ground, let me tell you a little bit about this new setup that I got. And afterwards, you're gonna see a story that could only be told in my infested backyard as I stack a mountain of fur while trying to test out some new ammo. While visiting Egg Gun West HQ last week, I boxed up some cool new air guns and had them sent directly to my house to check out and shoot here on the channel. The first to arrive was the Epic II, and this is just a 25 cal beast. So let's dive right into this rapid review. I went with the long 700 millimeter CZ barrel, uh, the folding stock, and then the standard air tube configuration. Out of the box, the Epic II just exudes quality. It has that balanced, solid feel that you don't often get with an air gun. The folding stock is a great example of that. It feels like an extension of the gun versus a third-party add-on, and even with all this adjustability, it's rock solid, both folded and ready to shoot. The Epic II will be a long-range slugger for me, where the tension barrel is key to avoid any point-of-impact shifts from rough rides in your truck or car on the way to where you're shooting. I've tested a bunch of different slugs in 250, 33 to kind of 50 grain range, and they all shot great at 30 yards. So stay tuned though for some upcoming long-range tests, but given how smooth these are flying here, I'm not worried at all. A lot of that is probably from the unique baffle design within their OEM suppressor. This thing not only looks great on the end of the gun, but it's super effective. I didn't even bother testing anything else. If I had to nitpick one thing, it'd be the trigger. It's fully adjustable and a precision shooter's dream, but that is not me. Uh, I like more of a hunting trigger with a little bit more resistance than this one allows within the adjustability. And I caught myself jumping the gun a few times like this shot here. To wrap things up, man, I really like this Epic II a lot. And with its top-notch quality build, this is a gun that'll be in use in my house for years to come. I forgot to mention, I'm rocking the new March Optics Majesta 8 to 80. Yeah, you heard that right. Wide angle scope with their high master glass. It's like the perfect scope for the Epic too. Uh, even in dark light like this, it makes a channel look like the Discovery Channel launched a Squirrel Week series or something. It's just absolutely ridiculous glass. With that guy down, I could get back to actually zeroing these FX hybrids. Uh, and these guys were moving about 1,000 feet per second, which is typically pretty unstable speed for an air gun, actually for any projectile. So uh, I was surprised though at the stability. Uh, and this squirrel was definitely surprised by the impact because these FX hybrids, man, these things leave a mark. And they sound like you're popping a football on impact. Man, that thud never gets old. While lugging a big old 700 millimeter precision rifle around for pest control isn't exactly fun or what these things are designed for, the accuracy benefit of being able to put the bullet exactly where you want it on these shorter, say 50 yard and in shots is uh, it's pretty nice. 
I switched up to the H&Ns and was able to get a few shots off as I was zeroing it before I was rudely interrupted by this fatty. So I had gotten things good enough for government work zero-wise and I decided to send it. You know, that one actually looked a little high, but it was definitely shooting minute of squirrel at least, so a clean kill. Let's actually watch this one more time, and I'll pause it right before impact, right? Yeah, a little bit. You know, that's maybe one click adjustment for windage. It's definitely an interesting way of zeroing a rifle. I'll take one quick shot here to confirm what I saw, and yep. Well, one click high and one click off to the left. No big deal. Now this shot, this should be dead nuts because I think I got this thing all zeroed. Yep, that was a strike. And oh man, did that thing hit hard. So far, all these slugs are actually performing really well at this initial test here. Look at that thing, dude. I mean, it's just frozen. This one was on me. I just pushed it just a tad. It's a strike in the context of pest control, but remember, this day was intended for me to figure out slugs on paper and which one shot the best uh, and get a little time getting used to this feather light trigger. This thing's incredible, but uh, I'd say mission accomplished for the day, but I should go down range and clean things up a bit. It's starting to get a little messy down here. One thing you need to watch out with slugs though is over penetration. At close ranges like this, 30, 40, 50 yards, they will just zip through critters. So make sure you got a proper backstop like the table for one. People always ask what I do with them, stack them for starters like this, but it's pretty rare they fully go to waste. So I use the tails for fly tying and uh, I'm working on some killer bed sheets with the rest. The next day it was like this snow was never there. With the gun all dialed in, we're gonna wrap things up with three buttery smooth slow motion tracer shots. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you like the smooth slug tracers or those big calibers that just smash things or the pellets that go boom? I think all three had their place, but let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed that clip, you should click this video to watch the full story.